My name's John Eggleston, Northwest Missouri. I've got a little turkey hunting story to share with you. Yeah, this uh, hunt here is taking place uh, up in Northwest Missouri. Before I tell you this story, I've got to tell you this other story about how we got this decoy that we're using. This is a turkey that the decoy that we were using come about. That Mike and I in a blind, uh, this young Jake is slipping up pretty close to us here. And uh, I killed this Jake. And so we decided to uh, Smoked. make a decoy out of him. It looks like a hen. Look at that. Oh, it's just wet. I thought I shot his fan off there, the look at that tail feather. Big old spurs. Had to look pretty close. I could measure better than that. I'll be able to carry that in back. So, we decided we'd use this Jake I killed there for a decoy and see if uh, it would help us on future hunts and drawing in some good old tom turkeys. This is a Jake that should make them toms jealous. And these Jakes make really good decoys. So now we got one. <laughs> four years later, or three or four, uh, we're watching this turkey about 100 to 150 yards across the clearing cut at the REA comes through. We're calling, he's flipping around, coming on up, thinking it's over, looking at it. We're using our decoy. He's not, he not doing much gobbling at the present time. He's got to close enough. He's a pretty good looking turkey, pretty good beard on him. He looks like one that ought to be tried to God if we can get him within range. He's, he knows we're somewhere looking for that hen. He's, he's taking quite a bit of time before he decides to come in. He's coming. I think maybe we'd tried this turkey a day or two before. Another, he had another one with him the day before and they, we didn't get him within range, but why together? They're not together today, why well, I don't know, but this, this may turn out to be a a close enough deal, he seems to be as willing to come. He get our decoy spotted, there he is. There's that one we killed a few years ago and made the decoy out of. We're hoping he gets jealous. He got a little bit of a swag there to go down around. He don't know which way he's wanting to come, but I know I'm getting pretty excited right now that I think my pulse rate's probably gone up a notch or two. He's going to come up around there, I believe, that little bit of taller stuff. He's coming right up here now. He finally surrendered that he wants to check our friend out. This, this was a hunt this spring, this last spring of 2014. He's a little bit shaky there about something. And my, uh, we want to try to get as much footage as we can, so I haven't tried to pop him yet. Now he's getting in behind the decoy, he can't shoot. He'll get in a position where I decide here in a little bit to try him. Now what you're seeing now is the footage off of this GoPro that's mounted on the decoy. You can see that decoy's been roughed up by another gobbler sometime or another. He's not as smooth feathered as that live one, but he's good enough that uh, he uh, got this gentleman interested in coming and inspect him. He may flap him here in just a minute. 
but he's, he's looking at in that blind. He's not sure that we're what it, we'd ought to be. But we haven't scared him off yet. He's still, he's still there. Uh-oh. Man better be a thing about shooting. And there he fell. Laying there in the grass, didn't hardly flop dead at all. Scored. Hey, sure, hey, man. hey. <laughs> Good deal, huh? Yes, sir. He, he come in pretty. I didn't think he was going to when he stopped over to the other side of that timber at the brush. And whether he'd ever come out of there or not. Sure was pretty coming across there, wasn't he? He was. So we decided we'd talk this over a little bit. Reminisce here what took place. Now we're gonna go check this bird out, see if he's got some record spurs or something. He looked pretty big coming in. Well, we're gonna go get the old Turk. See how long his beard is. See if he's got record spurs or something. It's a real nice place we set up there where we had that opening. This was behind us. Gee, we were sitting right back in here somewhere that day with Doug and Earl. We must have been talking about where we'd killed them a year or two ago there. Well, we've got to get a look at that beard. There's that high line you can see. Don't see any more. Ain't scaring any. Hey. Whoops. Hell, he ain't dead. <laughs> I'm gonna have to catch him. Whoops, I thought I had him. I had feathers. <laughs> get the gun. <laughs> We're having a chase under the power line. Well, I'll get him if I can. Well, I've got more feathers. Well, I'll tackle him. Let's play football. Mike's getting all this picture of me uh, chasing a turkey. An old man, 70 years old out there chasing down a turkey. <laughs> That's a pretty good recovery. But he'd laid there. Mike and I took a little break after I shot him. He was laying there for 10 or 15 minutes, I think, before I went out there. and He'd never moved or flopped at all, and he'd got a lot of life in him. I thought I shot his head off. <laughs> 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 he may have wet me yet here, but I think I got him. I don't think we're going to be able to mount him or anything. There's too many feathers are missing. I tell you, uh, it's a hunt that I'll always remember. A lot different than it was before I was hunting with Mike and before there was cameras and and all we just we used to go out and sit behind a tree, but I've I'll remember this one forever.